as Midley suspected, Obra also felt a growing sense of urgency. This doesn't make sense. The enemy's pressure hasn't changed since the war began. Obra was treating Tishorn, who could cut through anything by vibrating her alienium exoskeleton-covered arms, with an almost parental care. She refrained from finishing off Tishorn because she shared the same concerns as Midley. The moment Frey defeated Torun marked the point at which this unease turned into a certainty. Despite one of the enemy generals being defeated, nothing seemed to have changed. This suggested that even the death of an insect general had no impact on the insector army. Indeed, it might be worse. In the worst-case scenario, it could be a part of the enemy's plan. But that can't be true. It's just… Then, the battle situation shifted abruptly without any decisive moves being made. Torun, Bethop, and Abart were all defeated. Despite so many enemy generals falling, the enemy's strength remained undiminished. Such a result left no room to doubt that this was part of the enemy's strategy. It's dangerous. We shouldn't take down any more insect generals. Only four insect generals remained. Tishorn, facing Obra, Mujica, held at bay by Geld, Peliod, challenging Gobta and Ranga, and Zess, locked in combat with Kara in another dimension. Half of them had already been defeated. Obra's neutral expression darkened briefly, as if anticipating something ominous. Tishorn noticed it and smiled. Ho ho ho, so you've sensed it too. After all, these lowly insect generals are merely the opening act. Whether I'm here or not won't affect the bigger picture with his grace's immense power. Dimensional slash. The shockwaves emanating from Tishorn's arms transformed into slicing forces, tearing through everything in their path. Though Ober easily avoided the attack, she recognized Tishorn as a genuine threat. Her actions aimed to minimize damage, but at this point, she wasn't sure if it would be beneficial or detrimental. Dimensional slash. Tishorn unleashed another attack. But Obra, avoiding it comfortably, was growing impatient. You're persisting with ineffective attacks like a one-trick pony. Ho ho ho, that's an interesting observation. It's not for you to decide whether they work or not. Tishorn repeated the same attack because she believed in its efficacy. This aspect of her combat style irked Obra. She had tried to dissuade Tishorn by implying the futility of her actions, but that had failed. Obra had to reevaluate Tishorn. You're a seasoned fighter, making optimal decisions without hesitation. Winning outright would be easy, but subduing you without killing you is a challenge even for me. Obra had already deduced Tishorn's abilities. The gap between them was significant, but this assessment was contingent on Obra not having been injured in her battle with Michael. While her wounds had healed, her energy hadn't fully recovered, and the situation was far from ideal. Otherwise, she would have neutralized Tishorn by now. Her failure to do so had led to her current predicament, but there was no time for hesitation. Your honor, shine your light upon us, Tishorn cried out, voluntarily triggering overdrive, which she controlled effectively. Dimensional slash, final dance. This attack was unparalleled, with over 10,000 dimensional slashes rendering escape impossible. Yet, Obra stood her ground instead of fleeing. Divinity release. This signaled Obra's full commitment. Her mythical grade equipment regained its starry radiance. Her magical circulation was at peak performance. In her hand, she wielded the Beast Slayer, her beloved longsword's true form. Ho ho ho, becoming serious at this point is futile. As Tishorn pointed out, Obra found herself ensnared in the realm of death. Tishorn's intervention effectively blocked her escape using spatial transportation, leaving her no option but to face a gruesome fate of being dismembered. This was the expected outcome. However, the actual result was quite different, considering this assault. It's no more than child's play. Can't be. My body is connected not only to the material world but also to the spiritual world. This is nothing, Obra explained, increasing her magicules. The Beast Slayer began to radiate dangerously. Tishorn, bewildered by emotions she'd never experienced before, understood it was too late. My body is trembling. Can it be? Am I scared? But there was no turning back. Oh vanishing one, may you scatter beautifully. Plan eats bombardment. A massive slash rained down from the heavens, delivering a ruthless but fair death. Tishorn disappeared into dust, unable to even display the dignity of a formidable opponent. 